Hey everybody, I'm Kurt Steinbrook, pastor of Faith Lutheran Church in Wesley Chapel, Florida, and we are going through the book of 1 Peter. We are starting the final chapter of 1 Peter, which is chapter 5. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 4 today. If you've missed the previous four chapters, they're all on YouTube, or you can go to faithwesleychapel.com, which is our website, and you can find them in our blog there. All right, so let's before we get started, let's uh, go to Lord in prayer, and then we'll start digging into chapter 5 here. Heavenly Father, please be with us as we study your word today. Pray that you would fill us with your spirit, that we would understand it and be changed by it, that you would renew our minds and make us more Christ-like through this time with you, and that you would draw us closer to you, to understand you better and to trust you, especially even more. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So today we're starting with uh, chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you. Not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So this passage is actually for pastors. It's it's for me. Uh, as I read this, I am uh, receiving instruction directly about what I do as a pastor. However, seeing as this series has not been directed specifically to pastors, but rather to all Christians, um, and especially those who aren't pastors, I want to speak to the layperson, to the congregational members, about how you uh, can can understand these passages. You know, when, when you get to pas passages that are about pastors, I would encourage you, don't skip over those. Those are not only for the pastors, but for the rest of the church uh, to be able to understand what a pastor is to do. And you, know, and you, you are the ones, at least in the Lutheran church where, where I serve, you call pastors. So it's good for you to know what a pastor is supposed to be doing. You also serve with the pastor, right? This the past the church is not just the pastor's deal, it's all of our church. Ultimately, it's Christ's church, but we all serve within it. And so you're serving alongside the pastor. So when you see a master's message for pastors, you should pay attention to it. These are things to look for when you're calling a pastor. These are things that you can help your pastor with in order to help them to serve the Lord as a pastor. Now, your, your pastor isn't going to be perfect, right? So there's going to be times that, uh, that he needs to be gently and graciously helped along and maybe shown, hey, right now you're not really doing this or you are doing this and that really isn't isn't good. And so, you know, we need correction and help just as much as anyone else. And so I would encourage you uh, to read these and think about how is it that I can be helping my pastor in what he's been called to do. So it says here, you know, I exhort the elders among you. So that's what we're talking about. He's talking to pastors as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. So Peter is uh, a, a pastor, he's an elder in the church, and he, of course, witnessed the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is to be revealed, right? He is uh, saved by Jesus and will receive uh, the inheritance that comes from that, just like uh, you and I. Will. So we're, we're in the same boat with that. It says, shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Okay, so that's maybe that's the first thing, right, to remember that Ultimately, the, a pastor is called to that local congregation, at least in most cases. Um, I suppose there can be some broader calls that are given. But, uh, you know, that should be the primary focus of the pastor, not to the exclusion of the community. That's also part of the call. But if you're called to this church, then that's where your focus should be. It shouldn't be in all the you know, in other churches or, or things like that, that sometimes... You know, sometimes pastors will start to 
get asked to do conferences and things like that. And maybe that starts to pull their attention away, which at some level may be okay, but at a certain point may be hindering their ministry at their their local, uh, their flock there in the local community. Um, so then it continues on exercising oversight, right? So it's a pastor's job to exercise oversight, especially spiritual oversight. Um, so if he isn't doing that, then encourage him to do that. You know, some pastors, they don't like conflict or they, they kind of sit back maybe a little too much and they need to be encouraged. No, you need to step forward and, and have a, a stance in this. Um, if he is doing it like he should be, then trust his leadership. You know, and don't make uh, his obedience to God's command be difficult. You know, so in other words, don't don't be constantly complaining about his oversight or ignoring his oversight and making uh, things worse. Though, of course, have wisdom and discernment in all of that. Uh, it goes on to say that he should uh, not be under compulsion, right? He should be serving willingly. And if you get the sense that uh, your pastor is serving more out of obligation than joy, that that's going to affect ministry, that's going to affect him. And so it's good to try to gently find out why, what's going on here. And it may be that he feels overwhelmed and uh, he may need someone, uh, he may need some help or he may need some time off, you know, something to, because this can, it can be an overwhelming job at times. Uh, so he might need that. You know, the church may also be requiring him to do things that really a pastor shouldn't be doing and which he isn't gifted towards. And so that can drain someone a lot and really kind of make you like, oh, I want to, have to go do this again. And it can it can affect your whole ministry. You know, so in those areas, maybe the, the congregation needs to step up and cover some of those things so that he doesn't have to do those. Uh, you know, the congregation or parts of it may be cantankerous maybe causing strife within the congregation and that causes a lot of stress. And so in that kind of case, maybe we, you need to look at, you know, what do we need to resolve this to have peace in our congregation? Do we need to get a reconciler or something to come in and help? Whatever it might be, you know, if you feel like your pastor is just serving under obligation and not joy, then help to get that to a point where he's able to serve in joy again. Uh, the next thing it says is, um, you know, but willingly, as God would have you, that's what we just talked about, not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Okay, so uh, pastors shouldn't be doing this for, for shameful gain. We shouldn't be doing this for uh, about making a name for ourselves. It's not about having the biggest church. It's not about making a ton of money. And so, you know, the pastor should be taken care of. That's that's biblical. We should make sure that we're we're taking care of our pastors. But if money or fame or worldly success or if things like that seem to be overtaking your pastor, then again, it's good to have a gentle but real conversation about the right priorities and, and what the person's focused on. And where I see this happening more often than not is uh, especially if you see a church having great success. Uh, in what we would, I should not say it that way, um, you know, where they see like a lot of growth or a lot of notoriety, um, they're getting a lot of attention that can, you know, even for pastors that can cause, you could get a little puffed up full of yourself and you start to uh, kind of fall into that temptation that, that can come along. So now it can happen, of course, in other situations, but those are, are some of the more common areas where I see that happen. And it continues on though to, that they should not be domineering over those in their charge, but be examples to the flock, right? So pastors are supposed to exercise that oversight, like I talked about before, but uh, that oversight is supposed to allow the, the members of the congregation to follow their calling and to encourage them uh, in, in living out their calling, right? To be active in doing and uh in doing the things of the congregation and leading the congregation, that that should be uh, both pastor and congregation should be doing that together. It's not just, you know, pastor says it and that's just how it's going to be. That's not how the church was designed to be as a kind of an authoritarian thing. 
So if the pastor is domineering and uh, people are feeling shut out and maybe even put down, then that's another conversation that has to be had. And those can be uh, more difficult con conversations, uh, you know, but trying to have a gentle but real conversation again about what's going on. And um, in those cases, there may be times when you need an outside uh, person, someone who oversees the churches uh, in your, whatever, like in our church, we would have districts, uh, you know, so someone from the district to come help and uh, address that because sometimes that's what's needed, especially if the pastor isn't listening to the congregation, then, you know, having that conversation with him just from congregation members uh, is not necessarily the most helpful thing. It might need to be someone else. And then finally, um, it talks about being an example with that, actually. So I should say that that's uh, not only are you not saying you do this, you do this, you do this, we're doing this all my way, but that you should, that the pastor should be uh, doing the things that, that he's talking about. So, you know, encouraging your pastor to be spending time in the word and praying just like he's encouraging you to, to encourage him to love the people of your church and of the, and be in the community, right? Just like he's asking you to do, be an example. Now, one thing to, that I would add to that is that we need to, as churches, make sure that he has time to do those things and the resources to do those things. So if he's got all these other things that are being asked of him, that he doesn't have time to go make calls or to be out in the community or or maybe even doesn't even feel like he just has time to just sit and and be in the word and pray unless he's, you know, preparing something. Um, then that's not good either. So, you know, if if he's struggling with that, then see if there's things maybe that need to be taken off his plate to to free him up to be able to do that more. So that will go back into that willing or serving willingly, and and a lot of these other things that that come along with all this. And of course, Peter finishes with, uh, and when the chief shepherd comes, when Christ comes, uh, you will be you will receive the unfading crown of glory. That there's a promise. That is attached to this. It's a it's a job of great responsibility, a job uh, that can be a very stressful and difficult job at times, but also a job of great joy, and a wonderful privilege to be able to do. And uh, always good to have the promise that you know ultimately Christ is the shepherd, and we're just un under shepherds, and that we know that even when things are going rough. Uh, or stressful or whatever that we know that that he's with us and that he has you know the the end is planned and and we know that any any suffering that we're going through in the moment is just for a moment so all right well i hope that's helpful i know that was a little bit different angle than uh, some of our other videos and i i hope that might be a little insight and maybe a little something for your congregation to be thinking about as you uh, deal with your pastor. So have a great day, and I hope to see you tomorrow in the, our next video. We'll be covering, um, I don't remember exactly, it's starting with verse five, obviously, and then I don't know if it's more than that, but we'll find out tomorrow. So God bless, and may the Lord be with you. See you later.